so what are the main i know that there's so power stroke i know is one of the big things that uh, you discovered looking at modern crossbows mm. compared to medieval crossbows that was very different yeah, yeah. was that medieval bows aren't drawn back as far but i'll let you yeah. talk about that what together with that and other things what were the main things that you discovered about medieval crossbows that maybe you weren't aware of before um oh blimey uh there are there are lots of subtle things like so for instance the first place you start with making bows is you go to Payne Galway's work which was a yeah. book written 120 years ago Ralph Ralph Payne Ralph Galway. Galway yeah yeah and it's a fantastic primer it's a fantastic introduction yeah uh, and it covers loads of areas and and the problem with it is it says here are the drawings here are the plans here are the sketches this is how it was here are the dimensions blah, blah. and you read it and you go well it's fact isn't it right. and actually I, like a lot of Victorian stuff, I'm sure you've seen the Arms and Armour book. Yep. You open it and it's presented as fact, yes. but actually you scrape a millimetre under the surface and it's just bunkum. And there's a yeah. lot about Payne Galway that's just not quite right. Right, OK. Um, so it is it, it, the way you discover how to set the trigger and the nut, those sort of positions. Yeah. Um, uh, how, how the things spin and rotate, the angle of the bow. Uh, the way the the cord drags across the top of the stock and the losses that you get off that yeah um so all sorts of things like that really yeah, yeah. um something i always wondered about is it, how do you know the angle to set the bow in relation to the stock so that the string isn't like you say so that the string isn't kind of trying to plow into the stock as it pulls along well it, it, it's important because actually yeah. um if you have the string and it's just above the stock that's the ideal but actually that if it's a hunting bow, that will work fine, um, because you've got time to tune it. If it's a mass-produced munition bow, actually you want a little drag over the stock because it, it helps to stop misfires, basically, on the yeah. bolt, because sometimes the string can skid under the bolt and kick right. it out of the way, and okay, it'll yeah. skid over. And, yeah. um, so there is a reason that you drag down, but you lose about 10% of your energy through that drag if the drag is, is not good. So effectively, um, they're amazingly complicated crossbows in a bizarre yeah. way. Yeah. And I've just done it empirically. Um, I, I very amusingly once, I was working on this with uh, a friend who helped, helped me make the steels. And I did a TV job, and I was sitting next to a, a dinner, um, a professor of engineering from Cambridge University who I'd been working with all week. Uh -huh. So I knew him very well. I thought, right, I'm going to ask him a favour. So I said, well, I'm working on crossbows. I'm trying to understand the dynamics of, of you know, how it should be. And he went, oh, it's easy. And we got a bit of paper, <laughs> and we sat there. And and he goes, oh, it's this. And I went, well, no, you've got to consider this. And he goes, oh, oh. And after about five minutes, he went, that's a PhD subject. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and it does seem very easy, but actually, there's yeah. so much going yeah. on about the different angles and the different, you know, because even simple things. The bow is now at an angle, so when you pull it, you're actually putting a rotation. You're putting a torsion onto the bow as well as a. Uh, a straight flex yeah and so there's there's just so much to it so we're going to talk more about crossbows mm. in more detail and actually look at some loading and shooting of some crossbows not firing shooting um but so moving on from crossbows um before we sort of wrap up yeah. so crossbows daggers and knives sword scabbards are something else that you're um doing more and more of aren't they yeah um which we're also going to look at in a separate video mm. but no sword, sword scabbards are good i mean because um, I mean, simplistically, a sword is a sharp object, and, yeah. and you'll see it's a reenactor classic. Yeah. Is that you've got a ring on your belt that you put your sword through, and it's like, or stick it through the belt. Like yeah. how many movies where they where they take a sword which supposedly they've just killed mm. people with because it's sharp, and they just bung it through their belt, yeah. and it magically doesn't cut the belt or the leg or the people standing behind them. So, or so you get you get all of that, and and the thing is, of course, so historically the sword and the scabbard were an item. Now. Um, I was thinking about this yesterday actually, but there are engravings, certainly of woodcuts, of knives and scabbards being sold separately. So the two were not mm. made as, in, uh, as a unity, as a one. And, and actually that's interesting because it means that the chance of you going to a market stall and finding a scabbard that fits your knife perfectly is very slim. Yeah. So actually, you know, a beautifully fitted scabbard like this mm. would have been almost non-existent in medieval times. And I suspect if they did it for knives, it's probably true of swords as well. And that you bought your sword and you bought your scabbard, and sometimes 
yes, you had the two together. But I, I suspect often that was not the case. Um, I, 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 I suspect that probably scabbards wore out as well. Yeah. So, I mean, a sword could last a lifetime yeah. um, if you treat it well, but scabbard leather yeah. will often rot. And again, 19th century analogy, I know during the Crimean War, there's, there's a quote I've seen where it says hardly any of the officers still had the end of their scabbards yeah. there because they'd been throughout the winter in mud and rain and everything else and the yeah. leather had rotted through and the end of the scabbard had dropped off. Yeah, and so. they just break and crease. Yeah. And, but the other thing is as well, of course, a wooden cord scabbard is really actually quite a vulnerable object. It doesn't take much to break it. Yeah. And um, uh, yes, you can repair the core, but essentially... Um, if you sit on it, 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 can, yeah. it can snap, yeah. Yeah, they're going to be disposable. Which is heartbreaking when you consider how much work goes into them. And it, it can <laughs> be, but for all the people out there with a broken scabbard, they are repairable, actually. Right, and, okay. Um, and that's, that's, yeah, it's, it's absolutely fine. But it is something that would have happened quite a lot. Right. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, so scabbards I love. And they, they, yeah. they go part and parcel of a sword you know one if you buy a sword it should have a scabbard you know how do you wear it how do you carry it how do you protect yourself yeah otherwise? yeah so I think it's a really good point because you know people are I think increasingly throwing a lot of money at really nice swords um, but you know a lot of sword suppliers sword makers don't necessarily mm. supply a scabbard so um, you know you're you're a person that can can do that can match up scabbards with with swords and uh, you know yeah. if you've got a very nice sword it should have a very nice scabbard to go with it. No, I mean, absolutely it should. And, um, you know, of course, medieval times, you wear your money. Everything is about showing off. It's about, mm. this is what I've got, you haven't. And you don't walk around holding no. your sword blade out, um, no. but you do have your scabbard out yeah. all the time. So. And, and so when your sword is sheathed, you know, however lovely and however engraved and gilded the blade may be, it doesn't mean anything because mm. actually it's in a scabbard and that's what people are seeing. And, yeah. and yeah, so, I mean, actually, there's one I've got to show you that... Um, where you know subtlety is not on the agenda with this one <laughs> right know? but it wasn't you know it was like i am loud i am bright i am moneyed you yeah know, and in about. some cases i guess it may have matched other items of their clothing they may have had a, a theme going through they they may but actually to be honest if it clashes even better because something that makes you look and go yeah you know. it was a bit like yeah kind of like 1970s fashion ethic yeah. wasn't it it's kind yeah. of <laughs> slap yeah. people in the face well, with exactly, your fashion you know, choices right so um just briefly um what other things do you do i know you do some shields and quivers um, and things like that yeah i mean I, I suppose what i'm particularly well known for are crossbows swords scabbards daggers um i do quite a lot of swords i've got a lot on on, on my plate at the moment actually i've got a I'll probably give you a bell when this one comes through. I've got a Zweihander, so the uh, yeah. a proper... I think Is that the one, one I saw the blade yeah, for? Yeah, 1.8 right. metres long. Nice. So basically, uh, six foot sword, um, which is monster. Uh, yes, Swiss Sabre's coming through. So quite a lot of swords at the moment. Um, cool. Yes, shields, and then maces and hammers and... Of course, and yeah. All that sort of stuff. Yeah. But basically, I, I love making stuff. And the thing is, if I just did swords or just scabbards, I'd be so bored. And, right. you know, I like to, to move around, you know, between jet boats and and <laughs> eating knives you know everything in between so uh, so what's uh, so you've said you said some of the things you're working on at the moment what's what's kind of next are there any uh, new developments new areas are there um, things that you'd like to do more of uh what i have got which is is one of the privileged positions that i have is that i can choose to make something and then look for a client and right, um, yeah. uh there's a, i opened a book uh arma bianchi italian um uh -huh. Yeah, and I opened it, and more or less it was just like you know, act of God. Opened it, and there was a combination weapon there, and I just looked at it, and I thought everything about that is me. It's how I work, you know, and I can make that, and I can make it really combination awesome. weapon, as in a firearm with firearm a and axe. Axe, yeah, so, okay. um, and it's lovely. So it's a it's an axe head um, uh, on a a barrel, I suppose, probably about that long, um, thirty five centimeters, fourteen inches ish, and then a handle, and it's got an external. Uh, firing lock and it's just it, the whole thing's lovely right. um, a little compartment in the handle for keeping your match cord in and stuff it's just <laughs> sweet you know and um, firearms laws as they are in the UK I'll make it'll be completely viable yeah um, but I won't drill the touch hole so I won't right. I won't have it proof because otherwise it just makes it difficult over yeah here. and I suspect ultimately it'll go to the States anyway um, right but it will be as a proofed object you know nice, eventually. Yeah. Um, and that that's the one that I'm itching to all right. To do. So, um, yeah. I always, I always fancied um, seeing someone make a replica of, you know, Henry VIII's uh, one that's a sort of spiked 
mace type thing with I think it's got the water sprinkler yeah and it, I think it's got like three or four barrels in the oh, top yeah yeah, and, yeah. yeah I know so it's almost like a staff weapon yeah exactly yes. yeah yeah and the other one actually talking of which is the gun shields on the Mary Rose. Yes. yes oh yeah yeah, yeah. they, uh, they yeah, look they look shield, a lot of fun actually that's another I love one. the fact they have a little porthole to mm. look through as well while you <laughs> what I particularly like about that porthole is it's not just a little hole it's got this lovely little ironwork grid on it yeah, you know that's yeah. like a, a castle one but like that big and um, also you I think you mentioned in one of your recent videos actually Mary Rose they've got one of these flat Fetched um, uh, throwing darts, yeah, javelins, basically, yeah, those, actually, which yeah. is something else we'll be looking at as well. So, yeah. um, great. Okay, well, thank you very much, um, right. and we're going to be back in the next video looking at some more specific stuff. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We have extra videos on Patreon, and you can follow us on Facebook.